today we'll be talking about the Oni. If you don't know what the Oni is, it's one of the greatest icons of Japanese folklore. They are large and scary, standing tall, taller than the tallest man, and sometimes taller than trees. They come in variations, but are most commonly depicted with red or blue skin, wild hair, two or more horns, and fang-like tusks. Other variations exist in different colors and with different number of horns, eyes, or fingers, and toes. They wear lion cloths made of the pelts of great beasts. Also, Onis possess extreme strength and constitution, and many of them are accomplished sorcerers. They were ferocious demons, bringers of disaster, spreaders of disease, and punishers of the damned in hell. The behavior of Onis? Onis are born when truly wicked humans die and end up in one of the many Buddhist hells. Transformed into Onis, they became the Orish and brutal servants of Lord Enema, ruler of hell. Wielding great iron clubs, they crush and destroy humans solely for enjoyment. And Oni's job is to meet our horrible punishments such as peeling off skin, crushing bones, and rendering other torments to horrible to describe. All these tortures are from wicked sinners but only those not quite wicked enough to be reborn as Onis themselves. Hell is full of Oni. They make up the army of the greatest generals of the underworld. Occasionally, when a human is so utterly wicked that his soul is beyond any reputation, he transforms into an Oni while still alive. He then remains on earth to terrorize the living. These transformed Onis are the ones most legends tell about and the ones who possess the most danger to humankind. Some interactions? Onis are the stuff of legends and fairy tales. Japanese mythology is full of countless stories of Oni encounters with lords and ladies, warriors, and rogues. No two stories about Onis are exactly alike except for one thing. Onis are always the villains of mankind. Where the origins? Originally, all spirits, ghosts, and monsters were known as Onis. The root of their name is a word meaning hidden or concealed, and it was written with the Chinese character for ghosts. In the old days of Japan, before the spirits were well catalogued, Onis would refer to almost any supernatural creature, ghosts, obscure gods, large or scary yoki, even particularly vicious and brutal humans. As the centuries shape the Japanese language, the definitions we know for the various kinds of monsters gradually came into being. Female demons are not called Onis, but are known by another name, Kijo. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button until you post notifications on so you never miss out. I love you guys so much for showing this channel I love. I know I, you always get some haters in there, but it's fine, dogs. I must be myself. I really don't care what anyone thinks. So, hey, dogs. If you guys enjoy this, make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Turn your post notifications so you don't miss out. I do post every Tuesday. And if you guys want to see any folklores or anything like that in specific, just let me know down below. I read all the comments. I love you guys. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video.